already. Okay, perfect. Um, I start the YouTube and we're ready to go. Good afternoon. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you for joining, whether you're here in person or on the Zoom or on the YouTube. Um, your presence is really appreciated. Today, uh, we have the second talk in the University of Minnesota School of Architecture Spring 2022 lecture series. And we have the great pleasure to welcome Nani Grau and Frank Schunert, the co-founders of the Berlin-based office Hutten und Paläste. Given the lecture series focus on spatial practices that engage with existing material and social fabrics, we're especially excited to learn about their work today. Founded in 2005, uh, Hutten und Paläste, German for huts and palaces, is an architecture office that puts materials, spatial resources, and socioeconomic arrangements into motion. Developing and implementing frameworks for circularity, the office supplies architectural creativity to that which already exists. In their collaborative projects, unassuming structures, such as parking lots, industrial halls, or prefabricated housing estates are remade into socially vibrant, energetically resourceful and future oriented sites. In their experiments into new ways of living in cities, Putin und Paläste prioritize spatial adaptability, allowing inhabitants to enter ex into exchange with each other and the spaces they animate. Extending beyond design as such, the office also engages in participatory processes and the development of alternative financing and property structures. Nani and Frank actively contribute to urban programs across Europe, such as the Renewable City Network and the Rethinking City Initiative. They lecture and exhibit extensively and have been teaching alongside their practice since its founding. Nani Grau studied architecture in Germany and Australia and previously worked in the offices of Daniel Liebeskind, Peter Eisenman, and McGowan Architects. She has taught in the Berlin University of the Arts, the University of Kassel, and since 2021 at the Munich, Munich University of Applied Sciences, Sciences as Professor of Architecture of Transformation. Frank Schunert completed studies in architecture and molecular biology in several universities in Germany and prior to the formation of the office, worked with Foster and Partners, Scholl Architekten and Hamann Pott Architekten. Frank is a research associate at the Berlin University of the Arts. Um, Nani and Frank, thank you so much. Welcome. Um, we appreciate you, appreciate you accommodating the evening lecture, of course, in Berlin, it's the evening now. And um, thank you so much for participating. I'll pass it to you. Oh, well, thank you, Gabriel. And thank you to everybody. We are very happy about this invitation. Well, actually, we never received an invitation from America. <laughs> and therefore, we are quite curious about your thoughts. Um, yeah, and as the title um, of our lecture says, um, Architectures of Openness, Strategies of Transformation, um, we want to present design strategies that we use um, quite, quite often, um, especially when dealing with the existing buildings. <laughs> Okay, why is it not working? Okay. okay, well, you might know Berlin, you might not know Berlin. We brought a typical urban wilderness from the 90s in Berlin, an exciting time of change and experimentation, which inspired countless small scale spatial experiments. Um, the found was made usable with a lot of creativities and uh, limited resources. In this context, as you already said, uh, we founded Hütten in Paläste in 2005, and our work operates in the experimental field to generate new forms of working and co-living with diverse user groups. Uh, using limited resources, um, we develop architectural and spatial strategies that through their openness and adapt adaptability enable long life cycles. 
So um, here are some objects uh, that invite you um, or could invite you to make something out of them. Uh, well, years of dealing with the found or the existing has changed our view of architecture, also in relation uh, to new constructions. Social change uh, through energy transition, digitalization, climate crisis, migration, or even pandemics leads to a constant change of the existing. What actually is the existing? Uh, houses disappear, new ones emerge, uh, imprints remain. A swimming pool becomes a place of art through the cultural practice of appropriation. A former rail line in Manhattan, the High Line, was turned into a park, also a completely unpredictable change of use through which the life cycle of the existing infrastructure has been extended and new inspiring places um, have been created. For us, it seems sen sensible to perceive buildings uh, as fluid and changeable entities. Uh, well, as in the picture by Fishley and Weiss, Weiss uh, uh, which illustrates growth and decay, understanding building more like a garden could be an interesting way of thinking um, for us. Um, well, um, what, what you can see here is our library of resources. Our building stock has grown into a gigantic library of resources with countless stored ideal values. What you see here is basically um, our garden, well, to put it bluntly, it is an inspiring starting point for sustainable uh, transformation. The current social change and the, and, and, the, and the finiteness of our resources requires the transformation of our building stock with the greatest possible preservation. So um, minimal interventions, maximum com complexity of use. Um, um, well, this is actually... <laughs> <laughs> what we want. <laughs> uh, this, this challenge requires very specific design strategies, which we would like to present using our own examples of transferability. Um, before making an intervention in the existing, we can analyze to what extent an intervention is necessary at all. 20 years ago, um, Lacaton Vassal, I'm sure you know, um, understood non intervention as a design strategy after thorough analysis, which can be seen in this example of a square in, in, in Bordeaux. Analysis uh, is an empirical basis for precise design decisions. And uh, well, this is essential in existing buildings and also more complex than in new years. So Lacaton Vassal, they found out that the space functions as it is and uh, decided not uh, to change anything. And uh, well, and I've, uh, we found that we still think this is quite radical. So uh, in our practice, every design begins with the following questions. What is the core of the task? How can it be implemented with few and simple means? How much space and what standard do we actually need? What is the architectural design strategy? I would like to briefly present an example of this design process using the Finhütte. It's, it's a cabin from the GDR times that we converted into a minimal apartment. This is the, uh, the, the scheme of the conversion. The result of the transformation is a single room house. With a few targeted interventions, we created or increased the possible uses. We added a condensed functional furniture structure with kitchen, cabinet, bathroom, shelf, sleeping platform to the interior, and a, uh, a climate shell extends the building to the outside. It's a simple but robust concept. This is the view um, to the interior. The space is small, but becomes complex and open by superimposing functions that are lined up around the central furniture. It became an inverted mini loft, a space where many uses are condensed and integrated. Simple construction methods dictated the process of further constructions. 
the existing A-frame structure was repeated and extended, but differ differentiated through the use of color. By continuing the narrative, the old narrative, a new narrative was developed. Uh, we put, or we, um, here you can see the new building envelope. The times of use can be extended and intensified by incorporating climatic buffers and means of fluid spatial concepts. The system of boundary does not end at the outer wall. The surroundings or the surrounding is integrated as a resource. We created zones with different qualities of openness and enclosure, degree, degrees of privacy of nature and dwelling. We understand the building as an open system that is in constant exchange with his physical or metaphysical surroundings. So standards are decisive for feasibility and construction costs, uh, social compatibility and resource consumption. The question is what creative strategies can be used to minimize resources. I would like to, to explain this approach using the um, FKS school, which was recently completed on one floor of a former steel frame factory building. So um, we housed three classrooms in self-contained units, each with unique requirements, which we placed freely in the larger open space. Each unit comprises its, uh, comprises its own climatic zone. It is acoustically isolated, where there's no traffic noise, um, and includes a sprung floor suitable for theater use. The in-between unprogrammed spaces have a significantly lower standard with regards to technical requirements, but remain flexible, offering possibilities for spontaneous informal use, um, creative appropriation and play. For example, the structural standard responds on demand uh, to the specific requirements of each space. Each unit comprises its own climatic zone, is acoustically isolate, isolated and, in, well, I probably <laughs> said this just before. Well, uh, sorry, uh, what you see here is, uh, is uh, um, well, it's, it's very difficult to photograph. Um, you only perceive this space in, in sequences. Well, and here you can see uh, the music room. And here, is it right? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, uh, uh, um, the music, a uh, rehearsal room. And this, is this, and this is the theater room. And positioned centrally, the, the fundus or fundus houses thoughtfully distributed functional spaces making them quickly and directly accessible from the surrounding classrooms. There are no walls. Otherwise, the space was left as found, only cleaned, and the installations were reorganized. It, it demonstrates an appreciation of the given atmosphere. Well, and in the end, uh, uh, this image shows uh, the old and the new. Now we will present some central transformation strategies for more complex projects in existing buildings named open, complement, and network. We also understand our practice through research. Every design is an experimental setup in which we look for transferable solutions. The project shown was awarded first prize in a competition organized by the IBA, which is an international building exhibition in Thuringia, East Germany which we have been working on for about two years. It's the city of Nordhausen. And the task is to find answers to the future oriented further development of historic prefabricated concrete buildings. How can a uniform building stock be developed into a place for new and diverse residents? Existing development includes three buildings in prefab constru concrete constructions from the 1960s and 70s, and a central monofunctional parking lot as outdoor space, which undergo the transformation from the generic to the individual through a low cost and minimally renovation uh, strategy. Uh, 
which means also resource saving and socially acceptable. The open space is activated by means of surrounding and a semi public terrace. The former parking lot is transformed into a protective courtyard space for the neighbors and the community. The buildings themselves are supplemented by a new uh, usable layer. The nameless blocks became individuals names named Franzi, Ludwig and Sophia. Here you can see the three uh, new individuals and they were covered or they are, have new layers that are add-ons, character formed add-ons that mediate between indoor and outdoor spaces, add new layers of space and use. They always have climatic or energetic functions and create a coordinated connection to the open space. As a result, interventions within the prefabricated buildings can be kept to a minimum. This concept is made possible due to rigorous transdisciplinarity, disciplinary, disciplinary <laughs> and collaborative working method involving the structural engineers, landscape and building technology consultants. This is the floor plan of Sophia. Cluster apartments, for example, are created with just a few interventions to the existing structure. At least five different apartment types can be realized through a process of thoughtful dismantling of existing partitions to connect adjacent spaces. On the, um, see the bottom right there, you can see the scheme and um, up you can see five um, different apartment types or variations. The add-on serves as a kind of shelf that provides communal open space and offers an additional mean of circulation. Um, okay, here on the left side, you can see the, uh, the new uh, the, the add-on uh, and it forms an in insular layer to the existing wall that to which it visu visually, visibly, <laughs> oh, sorry, visibly connects to form a new building complement. The add-on has multiple functions, barrier-free access, communal open space, insulation, and shading. You can see a view uh, from the extension of the interior to the add-on. And this is a photography of the demolition of the old balconies. The fabric prefabricated buildings are opened up through targeted interventions and extended from their inherent structure. The aim is to make them permanently flexible. Each building is also thought of in the context of the whole. A connected neighborhood is being created in which resources are collected and shared. Depending on the type of building and the, the main areas of use, photovoltaics, solar thermal and recovery of waste heat are stored underground to form a local supply of renewable energy, which is distributed in the neighborhood according to demand. Okay. Um, every conversion raises the question of life cycles, resources, and their further use. What used to be weight is waste is now a resource, which brings us to circular construction. Producing circular spaces uh, is based on an understanding of buildings as parts of cycles, as well based on hybrid use building typologies. To make this possible, other planning concepts and tools are required. The circular house is a prototype in which tests are to be carried out on various levels, from the material to the component, the spatial program to the ownership structure. Which aspects of circularity or re reusability can be used in a meaningful way? The starting point is this historic warehouse um, on the photograph, uh, which will be reactivated and supplemented by an extension. Well, it's, it's all about the programmatic recharging and mixing. This is how it should look like in the future. The owner is a foundation. Land is leased out to a cooperative organization. The land can circulate in a long term and is secured against speculation through uses, usage restrictions. 
the circular house uh, uh, residential and commercial uses uh, well in the circular house residential um, and commercial uses are combined in a variety of ways using circularity processes. The building is understood as an organism that exhibits and supports circular material cycles, mixed use instead of mono functionality, so that it can be exchanged uh, um, and shared. One person's waste can be another's resource. That's the main idea behind the building. Uh, this uh, diagram or asymmetric drawing shows the upgrading of the existing building, a structure with two and a half stories in mass timber construction. So <clears throat> a building quarter is created. It's not only a building, it's a building and a quarter. Uh, a spaces for production in the basement, like fab labs, metal, wood, textile workshops, co-working and events and, uh, and an event uh, space in the hall, uh, two residential floors with mezzanine apartments um, on the top of the of the old building, commercial commercial space uh, on the roof as well as community uses with penetrations of circulations uh, um, of circulation, for example, staircases. So um, synergies in between uses um, could uh, could arise. We have developed a module that can be combined um, in many ways. Here you can see a possible combination, and uh, well, it's a kind of it's a kind of tool, and this allows adjustments to be made late in the in the planning process. The structure itself is quite rigid and very economic. Um, well, this shows um, the hall. Um, there will be beams uh, that can be filled um, with galleries in the future. You can see a possible implementation depending on the needs of the users because of the, of, of the, the actual needs of the users won't be the same in the, in the future. It's a configurable space. And the beams are also uh, a design element for an optional use. They show a kind of optional space. With the participation of the users and initiates, uh, materials were, were taken out and sorted with the aim of using the resources elsewhere. In plants, components are color coded according to aspects of circularity. <clears throat> For example, red uh, stands for new, not circular, and should be used uh, uh, during the planning process uh, to blue or should be changed um, during the planning process to blue means, uh, uh, and blue means reuse from local uh, source. So, um, well, in the end, uh, no red components should, should be left. Uh, this is a kind of a, a an, 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 a process plan that uh, will change uh, frequently during the planning process. Circular building also leads to other design concepts. The existing facade was removed. Uh, the graffiti shown on it reappears and in fragments as spolia. Well, as you know, elements of leftovers from previous buildings that are reused in new ones uh, to tell a new story or um, a, a, a narrative. Reuse means a lot of logistical effort. I would like to explain this briefly with regards to the facade panels. The removed and temporarily stored panels are a document in a material library. Lists for redistribution and assembly plans are created, uh, well, see above. Uh, scalability could be possible by using digital tools well, that but that we didn't um, um, had at the, at, the, at, that at, the, at that time, but that would be a well um, a chance for scaling these uh, these um, processes. Details were de developed uh, to use minimal materials that can be detached um, or disassembled. Uh, um, well, this is a, a partition ceiling detail in wood construction, what you can see here. 
um, mixed use buildings or urban hybrids can themselves become lively quarters through internal and, and external networking and thus become incubators for the surrounding neighborhood. Adjust conversation strategies in new buildings. Uh, we'll have a quick view on a big uh, project um, um, that explain the following. After completion, every new building is already an old building in the sense that it is now part of the existing building stock. Strategies of inherent adaptability can also be applied to the planning of new buildings and further development. The holds marked uh, is a new construction project with an inherent strategy for future conversation. Conversion. Conversion, yes, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it is a site that has emerged from the Berlin club culture at the River Spree in Berlin, in which the unplanned and unfinished is part of a permanent process of creation and evolution. Its origin is the Bar 25, a permanent informal settlement whose basic idea is to convert and build parts of the club areas in a do-it-yourself manner. The provisional here is also, uh, also stands for a way of life. What you can see is the called Johannesburg. It was built in three days out of used building components in uh, 200 uh, to 2010 to celebrate the FIFA World Cup in South Africa. Um, he, here you can see uh, the, this concept was transferred into the new neighborhood called the Holzmark Village. Collective construction and planning processes are taken into account. In this animation, you can see our strategy. We have developed, developed a structure for this purpose which serves as a framework for spaces of opportunity for the users. The concept of halls and huts is a large scale infrastructure of prefabricated halls and access towers and corridors, which you can see here. These are the halls and this is the infrastructure. Uh, the infrastructure is populated with individually shaped units, the huts. Halls are used for large and collective uses like workshops, concert hall, restaurants, rehearsal for actors. Huts are used for small scale and individual uses like studios for artists, DJ, offices for filmmakers and so on. Constant growth and change is part of the project. The architecture sees itself as a part of a dynamic system for changing framework, framework conditions. This understanding opens up complement completely new design concepts. Okay, current architectural production is increasingly created in an open dialogue. At least our projects are. Conditions and issues change in the course of the process. They need to be iteratively, iteratively and continuously coordinated with the design. Rule-based design is one uh, possible answer. The following example shows how to deal with variables in the planning process of an existing structure. We are exploring the transformational possibilities of a former military hall. In phase one, it is used for the Buga 2023, that's the main federal garden show um, in, in Germany, uh, then in phase two as a community center. At the time um, of the competition, the users were only partial determined uh, structural reports were not available. That's how we started off into the into the competition and the project. Um, nothing was clear. Um, well, the fascination of the hall lies in the possible in the possibilities offered by the almost endlessly repeating structural grid. It can be an uh, well and, and, and this can or could be an anchor for future uses. From the outside, however, uh, it initially appears sobering like a long flat barn. This is where our design comes in. The specific spatial program um, is implemented evenly and non-hierarchically uh, over the entire hall. 
uh, what the, the building envelope is opened uh, in an alternating sequence of open and closed jack sections. The result is a set of thematically determined interior and exterior spaces. This achieves a breakup of the monotonous large scale form into scaled and diverse spatial contexts. The climate ecolo ecological specifications are made uh, possible by the implementation of several fresh air corridors. Well, and it sees itself as a kind of playable keyboard of existing substance and diverse new uses indoor and outdoors, um, the interaction and networking of which creates a new lively atmosphere. The large form is fragmented, a new facade emerges from the structure. Basically, the design is a pure dismantling. Architectural principles and rules from the tools for adjustments in the further planning processes. Um, um, well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to introduce this uh, shortly. Um, we, um, uh, we established kind of de uh, deconstruction principles. First, uh, uh, the, the picture on the top uh, left, um, re remaining halls are opened and provided with a transparent facade. Well, so that the internal load bearing structure is visible to the outside so that it becomes more uh, interesting. The second picture on the on the on the top right uh, um, shows that ancillary rooms are um, organized into functional slots integrating existing interior firewalls. Um, and then um, the next principle uh, shows the circulation and free configuration of the ex uh, exhibition. Um, which will take place in, in, the, in the halls during the federal um, garden show. And the fourth uh, shows the open supporting structures uh, defined as participatory playable anchor structures, uh, for example, for uh, green, green spaces. So the main thing of, of these uh, four um, strategies is uh, that the concept can be applied to changing sizes of the halls in the process. It, well, it's, 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 and, and therefore it's uh, process stable. Well, this is just a, well, an, an, an addition. These diagrams show, for example, the one on the on the top, the complex possibilities of circulation of circulation, and the second diagrams uh, shows, as I said before, shows this uh, the, the internal organizational structure with the ancillary rooms, uh, which were organized in slots. Oh. This uh, floor plan shows the competition layout and um, which has changed a lot since then. Over a period of six months, uh, variations were explored and calculated. We calculated each of these shown well on, on the screen uh, with the builders and optimized according to the builders criteria. This shows our wall catalog. Um, um, well, or the wall catalog shows the, the, the concrete implementation of these uh, rules uh, using um, the example of lighting and opening measures of the existing interior firewalls. Uh, once the measures are established, um, the building practically designs um, itself. The facades have changed in the planning process. A few wall panels, panels remain as reinforcements. They should, should first be replaced by more transparent uh, steel reinforcements, um, but in this way, it is cheaper and more ecological. Well, I think we need to say that the budget for this, uh, for this quite big building is extremely low, that, so that we really have to invent very low key low-tech um, um, interventions. interventions. Um, this is just shows another approach. A hole in the existing concrete slab become plant beds. Um, and um, in this way, they support the, the drainage um, 
in these open uh, parts, uh, the drainage is quite a big issue. And uh, solar panels are added above. Um, using a prototype, the dismantling was tested in order to plan for unpredictability. This is a very important and sensible measure when dealing with existing building, because we actually we, we really had to find out how it would um, how the dismantling would uh, would occur. or would occur and 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 also work out technically. This is another sequence. Well, and this open hall section can later be combi combined with other closed and open areas to create a neighborhood-like compos uh, co composition with new visual relationships. Diverse, ex exciting vistas uh, um, and spatial experiences are created. And the main way of the Federal Garden Show is shown in this picture. So this is now, now we come to the end. This is the last project. Space production is never solely a structural experiment, but also a social one. The question that always arises is, how do we want to work and live together? In order to find and test answers to this, we can use real world projects as labor laboratories for experimentation, such as the circular house or the Holzmarkt. One example of such a laboratory for the future of rural living is the Predico farm, a heritage, a heritage protected four-sided farmstead in Brandenburg, around is the area around Berlin, a future place for communal living and contemporary work in the country for 100 people. We began the planning process with setting up an utilization concept that ex examines the performance of the existing stables, workshops, garages, and residential buildings uh, for residential and commercial uses and shows how a mixed use neighborhood could be structured in the future. The starting point of this development is the village barn, which was completed last, last autumn and is a former garage building. It serves as a form of social infrastructure for the resettlement of the farmstead and for the residents to grow together. It was planned jointly by old and new Predico residents and has been used by all Predico residents ever since. The project also has a political dimension, dimension because different life plans are being negotiated between city and country and East and West Germans. The village barn is a synergetic place with a high density and mix of uses, which is a kind of microcosm of the entire future farmstead. It is simultaneously an event and seminar area, co-working, restaurant, village living room, and workshop. Uses are placed especially in the heritage building as a kind of furnished concept. The uses can be interconnected and overlap. So this is a very important scheme. In the middle is the central main room. Smaller rooms adjacent to this space can be connected or can be used separately, separately uh, via separate accesses. Very many combinations of uses of use are possible with an openness of appropriation. It's an architecture that addresses possible synergies between users. The adjoining rooms, which can be connected to the central space, are tucked behind translucent walls to provide transverse lighting and allow simultaneous uses to be seen. Proximity is generated creative workshop on the left side and kitchen for users in the catering box on the right side. What kind of architecture emerges in this context? A spatial layering and superimposition is created. Collage of existing wooden structure and new simple industrial materials. Old and new intervene, a unique atmosphere is created. 
touch-ups are left visible through the use of untreated wood. Building with existing structures also means exacting the fragmentary, which can also be seen in the pattern of the old and new openings in the facade. Through this new identity established narratives can be developed. Simple construction methods equal simple crafting te techniques. It is easier for lay persons to get involved in existing buildings than in high specialized new builds. As a result, care processes are established and users develop a connection and then identify with the building. Well, um, the project and design strategy shown uh, develop different answers to current and future questions about the transformation of existing structures, well, and hopefully an attitude towards new buildings. Um, they create opportunities and define uh, the use and handling of available resources. And the, with the examples, um, we try to show that uh, radical less can also be more. Actually, that's, that's, that's the last slide. Uh, Hof Predico, but also Circular or the Holzmark are developing into a network of interlocking systems with a lot of openness for long-term developments. And um, yeah, we, here in the office, we are very interested uh, in how these hybrid urban ecosystems accommodate processes of transformation and the question um, of how sustainable and future-proof they actually are. Uh, it's, it, it's, it's, it's also possible to consider these questions uh, in an overall context. Thank you very much. Thank um, you very much. That's it. <laughs>
I have a yeah. I have what I have a question myself. Yes, I'm curious yes. about maybe you could describe a bit more the the kind of economic, social, cultural context that you work in because it's quite different from here. And I mean, in Germany and in Berlin, yeah. the, um, there seems to be somehow maybe generally a stronger interest in existing buildings or reusing buildings or even using buildings in between uses like that term Zwischennutzung, which is like in between yeah. use. Mm -hmm. And you really have taken that whole um, like culture of buildings and the, the temporal dimension to like a, a very strong level. What do you, th what do you think it, it, it is there that allows those concepts to, to be possible? How is it possible that these unused spaces, unused buildings actually come to be reused? Because somehow in, in, in our context anyway, it, 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 there doesn't, doesn't seem to be so much, so much availability of these, of, to reuse those places, even though of course they exist also here. Yes, uh, after the wall fall down, we had the great opportunity that there was a lot of open spaces. And uh, it was a time when, uh, when nobody knows who, who owns this or that building. It was just open. It was, uh, it was just people left the buildings. You could open the, the, the flats and it was already full of furniture and people just left it. That was the time when Berlin was very open, and uh, you could uh, you could everybody opened a bar somewhere in a in a cellar or wherever. All these bars uh, in in old shops they were called friseur um, and so uh, on. I mean, yeah. this is almost this is where we can 20, 20, 20 years twenty. Quite, 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 quite long ago, um, but I think we, um, we, 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 we all learned um, of this, as, as especially in Berlin. In, in Berlin, Berlin, we were um, in a very special um, atmosphere. Well, atmosphere, and um, um, we are kind of socialized in this in in, in this area. And I think Berlin still. Pro is, uh, Profit, profit uh, or um, well, the, the main Berlin idea is still um, um, based on this initial is, is still based on this initial uh, stage of phase. But now, while the time has completely changed, um, uh, Berlin is quite uh, on a very commercial um, um, trip, yes. <laughs> I, I would say, but. Uh, well, we hear we climate change. This is this is in this is the 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 the, the main or a very 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 important uh, subject here uh, in the in the architecture scene. So I, I can really see that there is a it's a, to a turning point. Um, um, also, um, we um, the the building with the existing. I'm sure this will be. The, well, this this will be in the in in a very very soon future uh, will um, um, be the will be what uh, building new buildings uh, was be, was 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 before, and um, every everybody here well, uh, I think even even our clients like this uh, U-shaped hall. The client is a is a city. And uh, all the strategies, like the rule-based uh, approaches, this uh, well, this comes from alternative approach projects uh, we had in we ha we have and had in alternative scenes in Berlin. But even uh, um, well, cities um, um, are using it now. Are, are, you, are using it now because you need other strategies for for these uh, huge. Um, um old buildings with hidden treasures or hidden uh, i don't know things you don't know uh, what is in it how expensive is it gonna be to um yeah to 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 reno to renovate uh, to renovate it and this is all in this context so i would say um that's in in the in the future like um 
um, strategies of transformation and building with the existing is will be, I would see the hot shit. <laughs> 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 and it's uh, and that's well, it. that's it. Uh, it's it's uh, we think it's really cool and we we like it working with the context and think it's quite easier I, for me it's quite easier to work with yeah. something that is there um building on the green um uh, wet meadow is quite diffi diff difficult but um <laughs> well I can, I, I, I can see that here this is just um really coming and um yeah that's amazing. I've, your your work definitely makes it the hot shit. <laughs> Sorry, because, because <laughs> there has to be. I mean, there's there's very uh, technical approaches to like re retrofitting buildings, but you know, to have a cultural design, creative dimension is 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 so very very important. Um, we have another question from the from okay, several questions, um, several. Several questions. Uh, this question from Jacob Mala, who's in the in the auditorium, but also in the Zoom. He asks, "Great lecture. I love your thoughts on Lakaton Vassal to do nothing is radical, and the building being like a garden. I'm curious about the intersection between new and existing structure. Oftentimes, we get stuck between the term adaptive reuse or preservation. At what point do your reuses become new buildings?" the garden becomes full of new flowers is it the same additionally does preservation ever get in a ever get in the way i guess does does if you have a special historic structure maybe you have certain limitations about how you can adapt it um yes, but, what can stay uh, yeah our, our main idea is the minimal intervention so uh, learn from the structure learn from the old or existing building and then uh, you confront it with a new program. And that's the point where it turns. And I would say, uh, at what point do your reuses just become new buildings? Well, from just from the beginning, because there will be a new use in it. But uh, the intervention should be minimal. So this is the thing, th this is the tension where we work on. And so we don't know, uh, it's a new building in an yeah. old building. It's or, a new building in an old building, yes. And it, um, well, it's... Um, and even you don't see it or you see it not, or in some parts you don't see it, it's a new building because a new use is coming in. So I know it's not the correct answer he wants <laughs> because he, he, it's not just physical. It's also the use. This is very important. And... Uh, so uh, sometimes it changes a lot in, on the physical uh, level, and sometimes you don't see the change. But why, why, just listening to, to your question, I would think that preservation is uh, not uh, the hot shit in your, in your surrounding at the moment. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, it, it's in not. Europe, the they thing. Say, yeah. In Europe, they say, in uh, Europe, they say, we should not build new buildings anymore. We just use, we should just use the old buildings. Um, in terms of uh, climate uh, change, uh, um, things, and uh, this is a is a complete turn of the design process for architects. Yeah, yeah. Because in <laughs> former times, we just say. <laughs> and build something new exactly this is over, this is over. Um, i'm curious um because i mean in, in most schools of architecture the, the the basic agenda is still to design a new building like the, yeah. the work that the students do is always to make a new ground and build a new structure yeah. in your teaching what how do you approach teaching because you have been teaching for some time what is what are the kind of courses you teach or the, the sort of tasks that you that you work on with students well, I try to, or we try to, um, well, to continue the work in, well, the work we we do in the office or, this, or what, what we are dealing with the same questions, 
And uh, well, in the last uh, semester, I had to deal with the first semester, which I actually never wanted and which I never had planned, but which I had to do. And uh, well, I uh, well, I uh, worked a lot with them with existing structures and things, and uh, because I wanted to find out whether teaching architecture always needs the new thing, and uh, or at what at what point it uh, it should be uh, uh, introduced the existing. And well, I, I just see that this is very helpful uh, to work with the ex with the with the existing. This is just one example. And um, well, and well, all the other uh, studios are just coming out of this context. For example, in the next uh, semester, I would like to work with one family houses. And uh, because I think this is the greatest, uh, uh, well, it's, 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 this is so uh, anti-ecological, uh, social, social this is the end actually and uh, I uh, and uh, well the, the, the this topic um, uh, there are a few offices that like Belgium offices um, Jean Nouvel did something with it 20 years ago um, I would just uh, like to think about ideas to um, transform uh, these areas uh, like uh, process orientated, like with stages. Um, how can you uh, heighten the den den density, how can you heighten the density uh, on one hand, but also thinking about ownership models because uh, the idea is to own something. And if we want to share something, we need to think about the ownership models. And uh, so, I, I find it also quite interesting to combine uh, like ownership um, 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 models and architecture and think about the relation the, the, the relations. So yeah, that's 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 it. And I I, I see that the students um, are very um, open to work with the existing, um, and they they are all very. Um, um, conscious of climate change, the younger, the young, the, the younger ones, and they really want it. It's it's really amazing if you build a model and you do you and you use a, a material that is not ecological. You got to ask, can we can we change this? Can we do use something something else? Uh, so uh, I well, this is the context, and I'm very um, not so much optimistic <laughs> that. Uh, well, much more could be kept, uh, but I'm quite op optimistic regarding a, a younger generation, um, like um, um, changing their minds and uh, towards ex working with existing, keeping and seeing, seeing that it can be quite interesting. That's amazing. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Questions from here? Okay. Um, then I can I can pose one more question from the um, from the Zoom chat. Um, you mentioned that you believe buildings can be part of cycles. Do you also consider your interventions to be temporary and therefore could be transformed again in the future? Yes. And, there's, a, there's a, a, a question about the circularity of the circular house. And I would just add some aspect about the circular house. In your website, it's shown very schematically, but you have gone now to do very detailed drawings. Um, could you talk about the, the process of doing such, such kind of construction drawings for a building that has materials from different origins being put together? And, and what is that like as a technical process? Well, there are two levels of circularity. The one is uh, use um, or you plan with used materials. This is not so easy because, uh, well, you, you have to start with the materials, <laughs> not with the program. Uh, or you, the, 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 you start with the program, but the, you also have to see what you, yeah. what you have and what yeah. you get and yeah. how it will get to you. Yeah. And... Uh, so this is a process of uh, 
well you have to obtain these materials and you have to find out you have to look in material libraries and so on and uh, well if you then if you have it you have to draw it uh, and so and the other thing is uh, these uh, connections the re removable connections um, so that you can uh, demolish the house in the end and you have the 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 materials that um what is sort of line uh, <laughs> like only like only one, only mater you have one wood material and you have that we don't metal. mix and we don't glue uh mm, yes. so um so and these connections that are they are not um this is not the standard you have to develop them uh, uh totally new and uh they they have to um they have to well all these laws and things that are connected with materials they have to be fulfilled and that's the that's the problematic thing and it was very and in the end it should be absolutely easy it, sh it should be not a com complex detail it should be a very simple detail so it was a lot of work yeah and needs a quite a lot of um, um man manpower um and it's quite um expensive the the, the, the process because uh, everything do, we did there was is not standard well here a lot of people just work for nothing because they just they do research on it or uh, just are so um identified quite identified with the project but um it's actually either, either you uh, um, use um, digital 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 tools uh, for the future. Otherwise, it's actually not really, in our opinion, it's almost impossible. But here for us, it was also it was a it was a kind of research project. How is it? How 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 does the circularity on all uh, different uh, layers and uh, this is what the project was about. That's fantastic. Thank you so much. I think um, we we can wrap up here, but I just want to say thank thank you very much. And quickly, I just want to show you the the, the room so that you can know, see the students who are here. Some of them have left by now, but um, but I don't know if you can okay. see. It. Hi hi hi. <laughs> yes, they they. Uh, they have a lot to 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 think about now. So, thank you, Nani. Thank you, Frank, so much. It was just incredibly, incredibly inspiring. And um, I think we'll we'll keep thinking about these ideas here at this school for some time. So uh, we appreciate your talk and thanks, yeah. Gabriel. Thank you again. And once, once you are in Berlin, you visit us, okay? Definitely. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, and likewise, you can. You're all welcome invited. here. You're all invited. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Take them up for the invitation. Okay, thank you. Bye.